I'm wearing Sorcerer's Apprentice ears and you can't see them. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer is a 1981 theatrical release in collaboration with Paramount Pictures. It is directed by Matthew Robbins, cinematography by Derek Van Lint, editing by Tony Lawson, music by Alex North, and it's written by Matthew Robbins and Hal Barwood. Matthew Robbins is better known for writing things such as Crimson Peak, Mimic, and Batteries Not Included. Derek Van Lint is best known for Alien, The Spreading Ground, and this. Tony Lawson is best known for Michael Collins, Byzantium, and Barry Lyndon. Alex North is best known for Good Morning Vietnam, Spartacus, and Cleopatra. Hal Barwood is best known for The Sugarland Express, Warning Sign, and this. The film stars Peter McNichol, Caitlin Clark, and Ralph Richardson. Peter McNichol plays Galen, and he's best known for Sophie's Choice, Ally McBeal, and Ghostbusters 2, as well as a lot of voice work. I know his face and I know his voice. I think he was just sporadically through television shows from when I was younger. Caitlin Clark plays Valerian, and she's best known for Blown Away, Crocodile Dundee, and Law and & Order. I guess Ralph Richardson stars in this movie. He plays Ulrich, and he's best known for Dr. Zhivago, The Heiress, and The Fallen Idol. I say that because Ulrich dies toward the beginning of the film and comes back at the end, so he's not in the majority of it, and that frustrates me. So if it were according to me, I would say he doesn't technically star in the movie, but he is a pretty big character. Like many other films at the time, Dragon Slayer received major flag for adult themes, nudity, and violence. Again, a giant push into creating touchstone pictures. The film was nominated for two Oscars, the first being Best Visual Effects, the second being Best Original Musical Score, losing both categories, the first to Raiders of the Lost Ark and the second to Chariots of Fire. Hal and Matthew got the idea and inspiration for this movie from the Sorcerer's Apprentice section of Fantasia, and after doing research on the story of St. George and the Dragon, which at its bare bones is very similar to this film. So they stuck to the original tale down to the bare bones. As far as the details, the story, the original story has changed quite a lot because it originated before Christianity and then was changed into Christianity and just changed a lot over the years. But at its bare bones, it is very similar to the story. And Matthew and Hal both wanted to be a lot more realistic with the film. Peter McNichol was cast because he met Matthew Robbins at an audition for a pilot film called Breaking Away. He wasn't keen on magic tricks or learning to ride a horse with and without a saddle, or losing his Texas accent, but he did all three. Caitlin Clark was also urged to audition, and she did many tests, and her test with Ralph Richardson is what got her the part. 25% of the film's budget went into the special effects of the dragon. The dragon's name, Vermithrax. Coolest name for a dragon ever? Just maybe. The crew wanted the dragon to stun people. They wanted it to have personality. They wanted it to not be too ugly to look at. It's a 40 foot model with 16 other dragon puppets. It was sent to Pinewood Studios on a 747. Industrial Light and Magic worked on the film. It was the first film not by Lucasfilm that Industrial Light and Magic worked on. 80 people worked eight months to composite 160 shots of the dragon. They used go motion instead of stop motion, which is Dragon was a little bit mechanical, so it could move as the camera moved. So it looked a lot smoother than stop motion. And they used real World War II flamethrowers for the fire breathing. This dragon was so legit, you guys. <laughs> Alex North supposedly used rejected music from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I don't know if this is true, so take it with a grain of salt. I read it, I thought it was interesting, so if it's true, there you go. If that isn't true, I warned you. Okay? The film cost $18 million to make and it made $14 million in the box office, but it later became a cult classic and holds an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. There is an article by David Denby of New York that says he thought the special effects outdid Excalibur and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Guillermo del Toro thinks Vermithrax's design is perfect and he loves the name. George R.R. R. Martin says Vermithrax is the best dragon ever put on film. Peter McNichol, I read, 
is a, embarrassed by this movie. I could not find evidence that he was actually embarrassed by the movie, but I did find an article in which he says that it could have been an amazing film experience. And there are things that he still does like about the film. For instance, he thinks the dragon, Vermithrax, has never been bettered, which as you look up this movie is very common. A lot of people think that Vermithrax in this movie has never been outdone. They think this is the best dragon ever put on film and I have opinions. The film was released on DVD in 2003. It was novelized by Waylon Drew. It was adapted into a comic by Marvel Comics. Simulations Publications Inc. created a board game. Emperor Palpatine is in this movie for a brief second or two. He gets killed by the dragon. It's pretty great. <laughs> and there are a ton of goofs that I will link in the description. The music in the film I think is actually quite extraordinary. The beginning song gave me the heebie-jeebies. It was quite scary. And then just throughout the rest of the film, it was so appropriate and well done and actually gave me John Williams vibes. And if you don't know who John Williams is, that's high praise because John Williams has done every score you know when you hear Jaws, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Superman. Name it, he did it. It's high praise. It gave me a lot of that vibe. The cinematography is breathtaking. I didn't notice a lot of the movement, I think because it was so motivated. The movement in the film was so motivated and just made sense that I didn't notice a lot of it, but I did notice the lighting. The lighting was so cinematic. That is the best word, the best description I can give for the lighting. It was beautiful. The pacing of the film I gathered was heavily criticized and a reason why it didn't do so well, which I think is interesting because it holds an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a very good score. Not a lot of films get 80 and above, I feel like. So we need to talk about it because it gave me big never ending story vibes. You know, never ending story is just such a treasure. And I know a lot of people love that movie, but if you think about it, that movie is slow. That is a very slow moving story. And Dragon Slayer gave me the exact same vibes. It takes its time. It's very slow. You have to travel and then you have to figure out how you're going to beat the dragon and it takes its time. And there might be a couple spots where it's like, okay, that's a little boring, but not really. I was very interested in the story and I thought the pacing was great. It felt accurate to the time. It felt accurate and justified to the story. I thoroughly enjoyed the pacing of the film. I don't know why it just got so much criticism. Vermithrax. I thought the hype that I was reading about this dragon was just hype, okay? I was wrong. This dragon is so cool, you guys. Oh my gosh. But first I wanna talk about the anticipation leading up to this dragon. This movie makes you wanna see this dragon so bad and it's so well done. You see just little teases. You see a claw, you see the tail. Then you see it flying, but you can't see it up close, so you're not sure. You see it, the outline of its head just around a person who's rising and they don't fully show it. You see the back of its head. You never see the full dragon until this awesome altercation between Galen and Vermithrax inside Vermithrax's lair. So the anticipation leading up to finally seeing this dragon in its full form is so good. I just was so hyped. I was like, I just want to see Vermithrax. I just want to see Vermithrax. And then you finally see her. I'm pretty sure it's a her. She's got babies. It is so exciting and does not disappoint. I thought I was going to be like, it's 1981. I'm going to be disappointed by this dragon, even though everyone says it holds up. I'm going to be disappointed. I was not. I could understand while Vermithrax is flying that people might be like, that's really fake. It's 1981 effects, blah, blah, blah. That's a little fake. The, the flying is like, yeah, okay. It's obviously like composited. It's obviously like an animation over real or whatever. But the actual scene where Galen is fighting the dragon up close in the lair is so good. I was so blown away and I agree that Vermithrax holds up. I get it. We get all these digital dragons now that are very cool, but this dragon <laughs> was so well done and I could totally see how a lot of people think it hasn't been bettered. And honestly, it's incredible. It holds up to today's 
digital dragons, I'm telling you. The actual story of the movie, I know some people didn't enjoy. They were very skeptical of the story and they just didn't fully enjoy it. I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed the story. I was in for the ride. I thought it was so fun. That being said, the final fight between Vermithrax and Ulrich, I think is a little lackluster. I think it pales in comparison to the fight between Vermithrax and Galen inside the lair. I was so hyped and sweating and pumped as heck when Vermithrax and Galen were going head to head inside the cave lair thing. The lake of fire, them like stabbing and breathing fire and just I was so hyped and so pumped and that fight was so well paced, so well done, so well choreographed. I loved that fight. I thought that was the final fight. And if that had been the final fight, I would have been so happy. I thought it was so well done. Or if they like, you know, did that and then had another fight between Galen and Vermithrax, I would have been fine with that. That would have been cool. But no. Ulrich, who dies in the beginning, is brought back to life at the end and Galen and Valerian stand on the side as Ulrich does a couple magic tricks and then gets taken by Vermithrax. Major spoilers, by the way. And Galen crushes the amulet, which makes Ulrich explode, which makes Vermithrax explode. And that's the end. That's how Vermithrax gets killed. Because Ulrich came back to life and explodes by her, him, the dragon, it. I wasn't disappointed by the ending, I feel like, because like the dragon explodes. It's cool that Vermithrax explodes and that's like a huge deal and it's an awesome explosion when the dragon falls into this giant lake and there's a huge like freaking splash that's really cool. But I have qualms with the fact that Galen goes on this whole journey, <laughs> fights the dragon, and then Ulrich just comes back to life and deals with it. I was really upset by that. The fight in the cave with the Galen and Vermithrax was so good. And then it's just completely almost erased by the fact that Ulrich comes back to life and deals with the dragon. And it's cool because there's like these big cloud effects and there's an eclipse and Vermithrax is flying around attacking people. And it's just like that part is cool. But the fact that Ulrich just comes and like steals all of Galen's thunder really upset me because Galen like was all cocky and then like went through all of this and was brave enough to take on Vermithrax with a shield and like a freaking stabby spear thing. I just got really upset because that fight in the lair just couldn't, I, I thought was going to be topped and then totally wasn't in my opinion. But I still really enjoyed the movie. I had a good time. I look at this movie very fondly. I would put, definitely own this movie, I think. I would definitely tell, my, I told my brother to watch it. I would definitely recommend it to you guys. So it's just like a little bit like, mm, Ulrich, why did you come back and steal Galen's thunder when like you were dead for the whole movie? Like what the heck is that? Especially when Galen put in so much effort. He took the dragon on by himself and its little baby minion things. Like, come on. And Tyrion, who was such a turd blossom, Galen took on everybody. And then Ulrich's like, bee, 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 bee. so annoying. The king coming to find Vermithrax dead and walking up and putting his sword inside Vermithrax's throat. And then some dude saying, all hail the dragon slayer, king whatever his face, was hysterical because this king was such a turd blossom through the whole movie. And then comes and claims he slayed the dragon. And Galen and Valerian just look at each other like, oh my god, this guy cannot be helped. What the heck? So that's hysterical. And then there's a little bit of a resolution. Galen thinks he doesn't have magic. He thinks he was never a sorcerer anyway. And him and Valerian are leaving Erlen. And he's like, oh, I'd do anything for a horse. And then all of a sudden a horse shows up and they just both start laughing. And I think that was such a heartwarming, fun end 
to everything that had just happened, I actually loved that little laugh. That laugh was everything to me, actually. But the king just coming and claiming he's like the dragon made me laugh a lot. That's all I have to say about Dragon Slayer. I had a great time watching this movie. I was so hyped about Vermithrax. Galen was such a good time. I thought Peter McNichol did a great job, as did Caitlin Clark. Ralph Richardson I have a bad taste in my mouth for because Ulrich steals all of Galen's thunder in my opinion. Vermithrax was incredible and obviously stole the show. The dragon was the best part of the film, but I had so much fun watching this movie. So I definitely recommend, I think, I think I might give it 10 dragons out of 10. I had a great time. I like, and that's what you want. You want to be entertained. You want to have a great time. So I think I'm giving it 10 dragons out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent, Dead Soul, and Cry Counters are the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are, so you do you. And don't be the king or Tyrion about it. They were both terrible. Or Vermithrax, I guess, but. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha